you for joining us again. We've just taken a short break. Welcome back to the roundtable with Asham Wilu. We're in Mombasa County discussing the issues in this county, politics over people, what's being prioritized here. So I'm, we're hearing a lot about infrastructure, county government's priority, but let's talk about security. We've heard a lot about security in this county. Where are we with that? Is it still a pressing issue, Halid? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, security remains a major, major concern. Um, we've seen the mushrooming of um, youth groups, yes. not just youth groups, but violent youth groups who are using crude weapons to attack places where, you know, a few years back, you would call the heart and soul yes. of Mombasa. Places like Old Town have now become no-go zones after dark. Um, if you look at... Um, you know, criminal guns, yes. Kalikwanza, places like Kisauni, even tuk-tuks, the rickshaws, cannot even dare to venture into some of these places after dark. But why is it, why is it such a safe haven for these groups? Um, I think ma majorly because we have seen uh, youth becoming emboldened on issues of criminality. Uh, we've seen many times uh, criminals being set free People are arrested, they're taken to the police stations, nothing is done. And we can't purely blame it on the police because communities are afraid of coming out to give evidence because they feel they'll be targeted. We've seen families that have been at the forefront, families of uh, you know, prominent uh, individuals that would be the first ones to go to the police stations to, to, to bail out yes. some of these suspects. And in some instances, even politicians are, are responsible for actually crushing or get crushing uh, police stations and demanding the release of some of these suspects. Uh, but having so said that... We, is, is it a matter of a weak judicial system? We do have... I don't think it's a weak judicial system. Yes. It's the individual's uh, citizens do not understand their duties and responsibilities. They feel if I just go to a police officer and tell them this boy is bad, then the police officer will arrest that person and put them yes. in jail. But you have to be present, you have to record a statement, you have to say what you've witnessed, you give evidence in court for that person to be put away. Yes. It's not enough for you to say you saw him and then you run away. So I think there's need for more public education, but also we can't run away from the fact that government's uh, tactics have in one way or another contributed to this feeling of resentment. You know, the swoops that were being carried out some time back. You know, someone who's just a this school going age. This is the national age. government you're talking about. We're talking about yeah. the police, which right. is under, of course, the national government. There was a time when they were carrying out swoops every week. Mm -hmm. They would arrest hundreds of people, put them in police cells. And unfortunately, unfortunately, when they say they're sorting them out, yes. sorting was mainly who had money. That was the sorting out. So this also generated a lot of resentment and it forced people to, you know, like a backlash right. uh, on what is happening. So secu insecurity increased because people felt they could get away with anything. I would be interested to hear what Surya has to say about this. Um, for the main fact, because you also represent sort of like government institution, you're a member of the water board, but you're also involved with the ruling party, if we can call it that, Jubilee. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, okay, I, I, I would like to speak as a resident also of Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to agree with what Hussein has said. Uh, insecurity was uh, a major issue. Uh, but uh, sincerely speaking, I think a lot of work has also been put in uh, from the national government. Because now women, even the youth, are involved in matter security. The people have taken responsibility. I think the, the, the terrorism thing has opened our eyes and everybody has taken charge. Everybody now knows that security is my business. So, but the fact that the police, uh, you, you know, have opened up doors and they, there's, there's a lot of dialogues that is going on within the community. Yes. You know, so it's become easy for even the women to be, to, to be engaged. The women are in community policing, the women are in Nyumbakumis, the women have taken up leadership. And I think it has opened up space for people to talk about security. And for a long time, security has been a preserve of the men. The women are not even on the table. So that, that has been something that, but now the issues of terrorism has affected us. We have a lot of our women who have been affected. We have a lot of our girls who have been trafficked to go to yes. Somalia to join the, the terror groups. 
So the women have decided that this is now our problem. We really need to, to, to sit on the table yes. so that we can be able to raise but some I mean, of these issues. What Halid is, is but bringing out, the tactics by the national government, yes, do you yes, think they've hampered yes, those efforts? Yes, initially, but I think they, 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 by the fact that civil societies have also come out to condemn, I think it has really helped. We have seen, even when, uh, I think the last time when we had the three girls uh, shot at the police station, yes. and we said, you're going to have a soap, please make sure you do it in a more dignified, in a more humane way, and they listen to us. So I think once there is room to dialogue, things are happening. That's what I, I, I want I'm to say. I Francis has something to yeah. say to that. I, I, I think from uh, the county perspective, there's one thing that we, we've noticed, and uh, these need to be more collaboration between the county governments and the national government over issues of security. We have an interest too, as a government, because we realize in, in the event that there is insecurity, yes. it affects our people. What have we done as a county? You also need to appreciate that over time, we have invested heavily through partners, where we have worked together to bring some vehicles, yes. where we assist uh, the police to patrol within our areas, and by doing that, we are at least showing the public that at least in terms of security, yes. there's something being done. But, but I agree with Khalid that it's, it's, it's time now that uh, we change the approach as to how we are dealing with uh, issues of insecurity and criminality within mm -hmm. our county. Maimona, do you want to add your sure. voice to that maybe before we go to Khalid? As Maimona is responding, <laughs> one thing is for sure, sure. Yes. is that security, as in as much as it's a national government responsibility, it has to be all-encompassing. It has to bring everyone on board. And uh, in as much as the national government has begun responding and addressing issues, you know, the open door policy, they're bringing in the county government, civil society, which is bearing very serious yes. and positive images. One, I mean, uh, results. One thing that we are still lacking yes. is poor parenting. I think as a people ourselves, before we even point fingers to the national government, to the county government, there has, in the last 10, 15 years, parenting has become extremely, extremely, extremely poor. That is why youth 14 years old, 13 years old, are going out with knives, yes. with, you know, those cobbler, cobbler pins, yes. I don't know what they used to do, that, and that's, you know, I mean, we have to ask so, ourselves so as a society, people need to know and women, women more specifically as, I mean, traditionally, we're saying traditionally, yes. they're the ones who are responsible for, yeah, you know, we, yeah, they're overwhelmed. Don't, don't, don't but that also is something. I don't want to. I don't. <laughs> I'm saying parenting in general, okay. parenting in general, yes. but specifically women. Yes. I think uh, for a long time as a society, mm -hmm. we've disregarded education for women. We've disregarded capacity building, Absolutely. and now this is coming back on us because we're leaving them with all these responsibilities. Yes. When now they, 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 they don't have the capacity probably sure. to do it. And now these are the results that we are seeing. So we have to work together. Great point. We have about three minutes left. I want to talk about one issue. We can't leave this table without discussing the perception that Mombasa is a heaven for drugs and drug barons. Maimuna, is that a true? Is that the reality? Well, just to add a little bit of what uh, uh, Khalid has just said about uh, parenting. I grew up in Mombasa. I was yes. born here. There was a time in Mombasa that you could walk around and uh, everybody would know who you are. And from school you would still walk home uh, comfortably yes. uh, as a daughter or as a young girl and you wouldn't feel uh, any fear. But today, um, as an adult, I cannot walk around Mombasa freely. Yes, the issue of uh, insecurity, um, the drugs among the youth, and the youth both men and women, young men and women. Uh, it's been rampant. Before we used to hear people uh, smoking bang, but today they're the bigger drugs. Mm -hmm. yeah? and, and it's not the smaller uh, people who are dealing in drugs. We hear of big names, mm -hmm. people in high offices um, dealing in drugs. But when the, uh, the swap comes around, it just picks the smaller smokers and you know peddlers. The real guys are not uh, um, anywhere around yes. because Drug has become also part of the politics. Drugs does not work on its own. Drug works within the system itself, so it also protects itself. It's not very easy to fight it from um, uh, an NGO perspective, yes. but it is within the system. Yes. So yes, uh, Mombasa, Mombasa Raha, you've heard of Mombasa yes. Raha. Mombasa people love life. So I guess 
it was easy to 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 come to Mombasa and sell and sell drugs and, and drugs will sell. But again, in, on the issue of parenting. I won't agree so much on that. Our social fabric is broken down because, yes, we definitely don't value education in Mombasa and generally in the coast region. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's educated, everybody wants to look down on you. Inappropriately, yes. the social fabric has broken down. We don't value ourselves and we don't value education. Okay, well said. I wish we had more time to discuss it further, but this is just the beginning of that conversation and we will come back the round table again. I'll just go around one, one time and take your parting shot in terms of just like 10 seconds, really short, Francis. I think when I look at Mombasa, there's a bright future for Mombasa. It's up to us as leaders to put our personality differences aside and face the real issues. I hope our you'll send that message to the governor our people as well. In, and our tell people, him I'm going to come back the with people the people in Mombasa table. who are listening to me yes. believe that there are serious issues that we need to put forward. Sure. rather than personalities. Well Thank said, you. I think there's a lot of psychophancy. There's a lot of bootlicking in this town. People have to put their leaders to account. And we need to put our priorities right. We really we need to know what do we need to move forward. Right. It's sad that yesterday's newspaper talked about degrees at the coast with our MPs and governors and everybody's questioning that when people are talking about development agenda. So it, it, it's, it's, not, it's not nice. Honey, I think it's very unfortunate. I know what? I think for me... Uh, the national government, the county government, civil society, we need to strengthen our working relations. Um, we need to put the people first, you know. As a human rights organization, we are driven by the Bill of Rights. Yes. And we think people in offices, whether national government, county government, civil society, wherever we are, yes. we need to work together for the people. Marina, finally, towards? Um, I think Mombasa people need to wake up, change the narrative start discussing issues, question the county government on specific issues, and leave the individual leaders alone. They do not run the county. They are not the county. Yes. They are not above the county. Thank you. And thank you to all of you for coming to the round table. I think really interesting discussion. We still have a lot to discuss, so we will come back with the round table again. And to Governor Hassan Joho and Senator Hassan Omar, We'll come back, we'll give you another opportunity to appear on the round table and we hope finally you can come and talk about the issues in Mombasa County. Thank you to all of you for watching the round table. Coming up next is KTN Prime. Keep it KTN News. The round table was live from the Pride in Hotel Mombasa.